Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangie reporting for The Media Speaks, and hopefully a lot of you are watching me on a really crappy camera that is a live webcam. It's the only way I can stream live right now, although I'm working on uh, other ways to do this. But there should be an HDEF version going up once again. It'll be going up on the Media Speaks. Uh, those of you that are getting the, the really nice high def one on the Media Speaks, leave in your comment line uh, what you think of the new camera, the new audio, all of that. All right, guys, you didn't come in to hear me talk about that. You came in for the massive Fukushima update. And uh, that is, in fact, exactly what you're going to get. I'm doing it today, and I'm also doing it tomorrow. And I say this all the time. This is a responsibility that I take very seriously, and I'll tell you why. Um, Kyle mentioned this from the Media Speaks. There are people that are getting their news censored in Japan, but they're able to pick up some of the smaller news organizations. And uh, if there's anything good about uh, not being more uh, well-known, and in big, I don't mean that for narcissistic purposes, but <clears throat> for the sake of uh, getting the word out, um, if there is a good sign to not having millions of people knowing who we are yet, it's that this news does in fact get into Japan. And they try to censor it, and they can't, because they don't even really know that some of these smaller groups are out here. So share this, get it to everyone, and I promise you sources on everything. When I do a Fukushima update, I back everything up with sources and show you where you can find them. Friends, without any further blah 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 from me, we will go on to this month's massive Fukushima update. Um, this is from Fukushima Diary. Why is contaminated water, why is the issue important? Uh, again, when I read some of these, they are translated from Japanese to English. So a lot of the times the reading is choppy. It's just the way it's, uh, the way it's transcribed. It's, you know, I'm not drunk. I'm not slurring my words. It's written that way. Fukushima Diary has been featuring the contaminated water issue since last summer, and it's been killing the web traffic on this site. However, I cannot miss the issue. I will show you three reasons before my pizza is even delivered. <laughs> One, uh, it increases the radiation do dose of the plant area so that almost nobody can work. The groundwater is also contaminated, and it's rising to near the surface of the ground. TEPCO built the underground wall along the coastal line, it says, but it pushes the groundwater back to the land side. In some part of the seaside, workers already can't work without the stand, so they don't have to stand directly onto the ground. And they also put the lead plate over the stand. Also, the contaminated water tanks are extremely radioactive as well. The radioactive material is packed into the tank, but when it hits water and steel, it turns to bremsstrahlung. That's B-R-E-M-S-S-T-R-A-H-L-U-N-G. Workers are shot by bremsstrahlung even when they are just patrolling the leakage. I'm going to put this in English. That's why you tune in. Um, it's so contaminated, they can't even stand on the ground. They have to build uh, something to walk on to even get near this. And the, the very act of putting it inside a container is creating a, uh, a different uh, radioactive material, which I did not know of. Uh, but the news gets worse and worse, doesn't it? Uh, the buoyancy damages the reactor buildings. That's the second reason. As I wrote above, the rising contaminated water harms the soundness of plant buildings. Fukushima is built on an artificially improved ground beside the sea. Considering it went under the earthquake and tsunami, it's likely that the rising groundwater may be the last straw. If the reactor buildings fall down, the crippled re reactors will no longer be cooled and 311 would be repeated. Of course, that is the day uh, of infamy when this all started. Um, three, it flows into the sea. Uh, the final destination of the contamination is the Pacific. Now TEPCO is building the underground wall along the coastal line, but the water is swerving the wall to reach the sea. So when they say the, the, the wall is up, it's not still contaminating, they're lying. TEPCO has been concealing, uh, and that's a good word, concealing the significant data until IOC 
Silex Tokyo is the host city of the Olympic Games in 2020, and he, he writes, I'm sure it's not on purpose. Let's pause there. You, you, you always watch Hollywood, these glamorized, uh, well-produced um, action-adventure films, if you will. Every time a disaster happens, like Independence Day, stupidest movie ever, the president goes into the plane to help the people. Our president, no comment. Anyway, no, no, no. If you're going to write a movie that's real, we don't even know for sure that Tokyo is safe. But let's say that it is, just so we can get the money, the prestige, and the traffic that comes with the Olympic Games in 2020. For those of you new to this, um... And I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. This is not a joke. Fukushima and the surrounding areas will not be okay to live in in 4020, much less 2020. That is not an exaggeration. Look up the half-life of uranium. I'm going to go on with the article. It shows a high level of strontium-90 has been measured from the port seawater since last summer. Strontium-90 is known to cause leukemia. That would be blood cancer. Currently, they stock 400,000 tons of contaminated water, but they will end up discharging into the Pacific as IAEA recommends. Of course they recommend this. Out of sight, out of mind, right? It's not going to do any damage there. We'll get to that in a minute. The new type of the purification equipment has never been in operation since early 2013. Even if it gets into full operation, the unfilterable material remains. TEPCO will keep discharging the water for the coming 60 years at a maximum level within the safety limit. So they're not storing it indefinitely, like people are telling you. They plan to release all of this into the Pacific Ocean within the next 60 years. Think if you, if you have if you have a five-year-old now, this will be happening until he's 65 years old. He's almost ready to retire. It says, uh, I was brought up on sushi. Most likely sushi will be safe. Sushi will be safe in the sea around Japan and the river will run up the mountain and the sun will set in the west. Yeah, exactly. Um, this is from InfoWars, Paul Joseph Watson. Scientists to monitor California kelp forests for Fukushima radiation. Um, while publicly downplaying the threat posed by the Fukushima radiation to the West Coast government, scientists are preparing to monitor kelp forests across the entire state of California for contamination from the crippled nuclear power plant. Nineteen academic and government institutions will take part in the project dubbed Kelp Watch 2014 which will collect samples of giant kelp and bull kelp from across the entire Californian coastline. It goes on, sampling will begin next month and end in late winter, with scientists from Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory involved in the study. It is imperative that we monitor this coastal forest for any radioactive contaminants that will be arriving this year in the ocean current from the Fukushima disaster. CSULB biology professors, professor Stephen L. Manley told CBS News. Experts for the Institute for Cross-Disciplinary Physics and Complex Systems in Spain have concluded, and there is a link in the article, that the plume of radioactive cesium-137 released by Fukushima disaster will begin reaching U.S. coastal waters in early 2014. For you Lady Gaga fans, it is, in fact, early 2014. While publicly scoffing at independent researchers concerned about Fukushima radiation, of course, yeah, they say in public they're not worried about it. Public health authorities have been making preparations which many see as being connected to the ongoing crisis at the plant. Um, the Department of Health and Human Services recently ordered 14 million doses of potassium iodide. We went over that last month. Um, if you're new to this, it's uh, what the government would order if they're expecting some kind of an extreme nuclear incident, such as a Unit 4 in Japan falling over. It would, it would make the west coast of the United States uh, uninhabitable. I don't care how safe they say it is. Uh, even if you're living there now, I'm telling you, you're shortening your life and you're going to regret it. You're going to be getting chemo someday and you're really going to regret it. You have got to get off the west coast. 
High levels of radioactivity have also been detected on beach in uh, San Francisco. We went over that a lot last month. If you're uh, again, if you're new, go to last month's massive Fukushima update. This is from Debka.com, and I put this in here because of it, while it's not directly related to Japan, as the other stories are going to be, and as the other ones were. It's important to realize all of the nuclear issues that are all around us here because we all know it's a lie when they say that the nuclear industry is not tied into the weapons industry. Of course it is. That's why they put so much money into it. And it's been exposed by a billion people. It's not something I made up. Well, listen to this. Um, Obama withholds from Israel details of nuclear accord with Iran. Tehran denies dismantling its program. Um, it doesn't matter which side you are on, Islamic or uh, Jewish. Building a nuclear power plant in that part of Iran is almost as stupid as the one they built in Fukushima. The same people that predicted a massive uh, earthquake in Fukushima are the same people that are predicting an earthquake due where they're building this plant in Iran. Um, and it, the, and as all this goes on, the worst diplomacy ever can always be found in the Obama administration, as you are about to hear. U.S. President Joe Biden, when he met Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu Monday night, January 13th, refused to level with him on the detailed agreements which the Americans claimed were reached by six powers and Iran in their talks earlier this week on the implementation of the first stage Geneva Accord. This is reported by Debka's Files, Washington, and Jerusalem sources. Um, and this is the two things they're most upset about in Jerusalem. One, it denotes a sharp decline in the strategic relations between the Obama administration and the Netanyahu government and leaves Israel in the dark and an issue of vital concern to its security. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you love or hate Israel. Um, what matters is that this is diplomacy. And if you are trying to create peace, you do not leave people that you are aligned to in the dark. I don't care if you, I don't care who it is. If you're going to, if you're going to cause peace in a region, you need to let the people in the region know what's going on. Two, it is suspected that there is no implementation agreement at all and that the U.S. President, Secretary of State John Kerry, and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov are repeating the performance they put on three months ago in Geneva. Then, they presented a very general framework of non-binding clauses, that's important, they didn't promise anything, reached between the six powers and Iran as a genuine, full-fledged interim accord, when in reality, it omitted the details of how and when Iran would dismantle the military side of its nuclear program, and until Alenia neglected to address the critical issue of Iran's nuclear capabilities on its missiles. So, Obama it doesn't just lie when he says that you can, in fact, keep your insurance if you like it. He can't even tell the truth to our allies. And that matters because Iran is not going to take him seriously either. And the diplomacy in this country just continues to go southward. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Make sure you go to the ArcadiaGrill.com if you get to Canton, Ohio, or if you're anywhere within like an hour or two of Canton, Ohio. It is worth the drive. It is some of the best food you'll ever eat. As I always say, I recommend the ravioli. My girlfriend is all about the chicken fingers. Um, they have a full bar. They have the most delicious Italian bread you've ever eaten. And if you go there on Saturday mornings, they've got a breakfast uh, layout that will just floor you. Um, go to the Arcadia Grill. Let them know that uh, Sam from The Correct View sent you. And you will be enjoying perhaps one of the best meals you've ever eaten. Arcadia Grill. That's where it's waiting for you at in Canton. Friends, i got four more stories on part one of the Fukushima update here. UPI.com. Iranian news agency reports U.S. has been run by Nazi space aliens since 1945. Um, <laughs> I put this in here because these are the people that want to run a nuclear power plant in an earthquake zone, just like Japan did. Japan, oh, that, that big earthquake will never hit us. We're going to be fine. Iran, Nazi space aliens. All right, guys, uh, hey, there's more serious news coming up in a minute, but this is important because it states the mindset of people that want to have the bomb. 
Here's a headline for a story that seems just a bit too out of this world to be true. Snowden documents proving U.S. alien Hitler links on Russia appeared on the website of the semi-official Iranian news agency Fars News on Sunday. No, it wasn't hacked. It was put there. After previously reporting on subjects like the British royal family being Jewish, well, they're tied into some areas there, and Israel's plans to annex Iraq, what? Fars News may have outdone itself by breaking news that the U.S. government has been run by a shadow government of Nazi space aliens since 1945. Please let us run a nuke plant. According to the paper, the information about the secret government of Nazi aliens was provided by NSA leaker Edward Snowden, who, you know, was a, a, a Russian spy, no less, as well. That's also not true. After losing World War II, the aliens apparently adopted to become the secret force behind the United States government and have made President Obama their tool. He's a tool, all right, but I don't think it's for the aliens. Um, for those who were wondering, the Nazi aliens are based in the stronghold in Nevada. According to FARS, Russia's Federal Security Service put all this information into a report that somehow slipped into the clutches of conspiracy theory website what does it mean dot com from the piece i'm just going to read it uh, a stunning federal security services report of the nearly two million highly classified top secret documents obtained by united states of defense run national security agency central security service by the american expatriate edward snowden states that this information is providing incontrovertible proof that an alien extraterrestrial extra intelligence agenda is driving the U.S. domestic and international party policy and has been doing so since 1945. Why does that matter? Why? Why am I reporting on this? Because the people of Iran have been brainwashed to where they're going to read this and a lot higher percentage of them than you think are going to believe that it's true because they've been taught that this news agency never lies. Why am I mentioning that? Because look at the number of people. Um, well, why is it your band can never get a record deal? Why is it your book can never get published? It's because they've consolidated and everything is run by a small handful of people that own a lot of different companies. And the pyramids up to just, you know, 500 or 1,000 people being in charge of all major media in the world. And they dumb people down like this so that when there is a nuclear issue, you automatically believe what they say. Just like the people in Iran believe that Nazi aliens are here, there are people in, um, in Iran being told that, you know, hey, th th this nuclear thing, it's safe. It's safe. It's fine. It's going to be good. You can build it in an earthquake zone and it's perfectly safe. And you've got the ABC News telling you it's safe to eat tuna. It, you know, at some point, you have to realize that we're all being fed a lot of BS um, and clearly a lot of poison fish. Now this is from RT. Fish testing 124 times over radiation limit caught off of Fukushima. Fish with deadly levels of radioactive cesium have been caught just off the coast of Fukushima Prefecture as scientists continue to assess the damage caused to the marine food chain by the 2011 nuclear disaster. One of the samples of the 37 Black Sea Bream specimens caught some 37 kilometers south of the crippled power plant tested at, at 12,400 becquerels per kilogram of radioactive cesium, making it 124 times deadlier than the threshold considered safe for human consumption, Japan's Fisheries Research Agency announced. Now, all this time, they've been telling you that, you know, the, the, the ocean's like a big sponge. It's going to soak it all up. That is 12,400 becquerels. That is 12,400 little tiny nuclear reactions that happen inside of the human body, and any one of those can trigger a uh, cancer, a heart disease, a tumor, uh, anything. And depending on what the radionuclide is, it does so perhaps forever. The samples were caught at the mouth of the Nidogawa River in Iwaki, Fukushima Prefecture, on November 17th. Two other fish caught there were also treated 
also tested, excuse me, non-safe for human consumption, showing radiation levels of 426 and 197 becquerels per kilogram. The rest of the fish were reportedly within the safety limits. Well, let's remember, of course, they raised the safety limits um, from uh, because if they didn't, then you, they wouldn't be able to sell fish. So rather, they lied about what was safe and then promptly sold you the fish so you would eat it. Black sea bream are currently restricted from being fished in Miyagi and Fukushima prefectures and sold for human consumption. As scientists from the Fisheries Research Agency say, they plan to investigate the source of the contamination further. Fukushima might be it. After the Fuku disaster, Japan lowered its threshold from cesium levels in food from 500 becquerels per kilogram to 100 becquerels per kilo, making the country's regulations six, six times stricter than European un, Union standards. Well, of course, that was changed after Chernobyl to do the same thing. The record cesium reading was recorded last year when a fish caught near the plant carried 74,000 becquerels of cesium per kilogram. Professor Chris Busby, he's like a hero, from Scientific Secretary of the European Committee on Radiation Risk and a member of the UK Department of Health Committee examining radiation risk for internal emitters, says that despite a high-level radiation in the marine food chain, Japan so far is the only one dealing with a direct threat. However, the fish are now swimming over here, of course. The concentrations of radionuclides, which are going into the Pacific or have been injected to the Pacific, by the time they get to the U.S. and to China and to the Southeast Korea they, and so on, they will not be enormously high, Busby told Russia. Now, um, again, this, this gets worse and worse as it concentrates, so please remember that. Yet the scientists warned that nuclear contamination of Japan could result in 400 to 800 extra cancer cases in Japan in the next 50 years. We've already seen some effects in infant mortality and thyroid cancer in Japan, Busby said. So I think that this is going to get worse. I think we are going to see a major effect on the general health of the Japanese population in northern Japan. There's going to be a decrease in the birth rate and an increase in the death rate. In the meantime, it says TEPCO, the operator of the Fukushima nuclear site, reported radiation levels eight times government safety guidelines. TEPCO to told press that the predominant reason behind the sharp increase in radiation at the plant was x-rays coming from the storage tanks holding radioactive water that has been leaking from the facility, of course, the one that they're going to dump into the ocean for the next 60 years. Um, what do you do? You don't eat seafood, for one. Uh, am I saying that you should not live on the west coast of the U.S.? You bet your ass that's what I'm saying. Uh, e &E uh They're all gone. The most frightening story of the night. They're all gone. Shock as sardines vanish off California. Fishermen didn't find a single one all summer. Scientists, quote, This is about the entire Pacific coast. Canada, Mexico, United States... NOAA says we don't know why they aren't surviving. They're just swimming in the most radioactive stew known to man in the Pacific Ocean, but they don't know why it's happening. I'm going to read a few of these. Long Beach Press Telegram, January 13th. Sardines vanish off the coast. Squid and anchovy fill the void for fishermen. Um, Larry Durr has pulled up Pacific sardines by the ton since the 80s, Anchovies have proven a poor replacement since sardines become scarce. Fortunately, a boom in market squid has propelled the industry. Again, it's always about the industry. Cary Griffin, NOAA. Is it El Nino? Pacific Decado Oscillation, El Nino? Long-term climate change? More marine mammals eating sardines? Did we go to Mexico to further offshore? We don't know. We do know, you dumbass! It's Fukushima! We know that global warming isn't even happening, you dolt! Uh, Russ Vetter, Noah, they haven't had a good recruitment. You have to have adults to produce the eggs and then the environmental conditions that would allow them to grow and then to not have them eaten by pelicans and terns, etc. It's always complicated about why a fish egg doesn't make it through the problems, but we do know that when the ocean is on the cooler side, conditions aren't right. Hey, dummy, we also know when it's glowing. They don't do well then either. 
Jeff Shester, scientist with Oceana, one more for you. This is about the entire Pacific coast, including the U.S. and Mexico, not just British Columbia. Fishermen have stopped fishing because they've hit their quota. That's one thing. But they're stopping because they can't find any fish. That means fishery management is failing. We're in an emergency situation right now. It's not overfishing. That's not what it is. That is why I'm bringing you to today's dunce of the day. Infowars, Adam Salazar. Scientists baffled by Mars mass uh, sardine die-off on the West Coast. All right, friends. If I was to take this right now, okay, now look, I'm going to hit myself in the head with this wrought iron. Now, see, that hurts for some reason. Now, I don't know what it is. It might be the caffeine that I had earlier. Maybe I had some too much of it. Then again, maybe I'm getting a cold. You know, getting a cold could cause your head. Maybe it's because I'm hitting myself in the head and it's as obvious as can possibly be. Maybe the sardines are dying because Fukushima is in meltdown mode. They're melting through, and maybe everybody that predicted this was going to happen, like I did, like Busby did, like Lauren Murray did, like Helen Caldicott did, maybe it's happening due to the glowing nuclear power plant. Yes, we already know that. Experts are baffled by a confirmed and unexpected die-off of the West Coast sardine population. I'm not surprised. It wasn't unexpected to anybody that's followed this since it happened. A mystery, it says, adding to an already long list of devastating environmental mysteries taking place in the wake of the Fukushima radiological disaster. God bless Adam Salazar. One that follows not only the discovery of various radiation hotspots along the very same coast, such as the 1,400% increase documented by InfoWars, ongoing investigation into the subject, but anomalies such as seen in the conjoined gray whale calves that Michael Thalen, Mikhail Thalen reported on, that we'll find dying along the West Coast. Meanwhile, the mainstream media has once again failed to even mention the reality of that Fukushima's effects have already been documented within the United States. From studies proving that the radioactive contamination is in seafood, to the admission that 70 plus percent of the radioactive waste from the plant was dumped into the ocean. For you Usher fans, that means most of it. Still, however, the media runs around without a clue. That's why they got today's dunce of the day. Scientists are uncertain of what is causing the biggest sardine crash in generations, which is expected to wreak havoc up the food chain and cause economic problems for those who fish, says the LA Times. Yeah, you know, economic problems. Never mind that your loved ones are dropping over like cancer, like flies from this. Never mind heart disease and shortened lives and a susceptibility to catch every flu that goes down the, the freaking way. At the start of 2011, the sardine population was absolutely booming. Why might that be? Because the start of 2011 didn't see a meltdown yet. In the last 100 years, the number of small fish, such as pilchards, herrings, anchovies, sprats, and sardines, has, been, has more than doubled, according to the study. That's because in the last 100 years, we didn't have four meltdowns going on. Right on the coast! Now, this was said to the Daily Mail, reported in January 2011, mere months before a tsunami slammed into Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. That's why. The massive fish decline shows a spate of strange ocean occurrences that appear to have sprung up in synchronicity with the timing of the meltdown. I'm kind of getting a headache here. What, what a coincidence. For example, a recent study found 98% of the ocean floor is covered with dead sea life. We covered that last month. A number that has increased 97% in the last two years alone. Two years is about how long it's been since the radioactivity actually hit the water. In the 24 years of this study, the past two years have been the biggest amounts of this determined by far, a marine biologist for the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute told National Geographic last November. For those of you who think I have no sources. Also, marine biologists are researching the cause of melting sea stars, which we reported on. All along the West Coast, a mysterious illness scientists teamed sea star wasting disease, just like those who get AIDS. During the InfoWar team's investigation of the West Coast radiation, which was done brilliantly by Jakari Jackson, who also got sent to the Super Bowl. How good is Alex to his employees? 
is awful. During the West Coast radiation, we found disease in Charleston, Oregon, an area previously thought to be unaffected. The fact that the fallout from Fukushima nuclear disaster has been predicted to reach the U.S. coast by 2014, in addition to the fact that scientists will soon begin the California kelp monitoring, as we mentioned in the beginning, and for those of you that eat it for health, take selenium instead, and it'll have all the same benefits, um, leads to this... Uh, speculate, of course, that the radioactive plume has already hit the West Coast, and we've documented on this show repeatedly that it has. Indeed, readings taken up and down the West Coast appear to corroborate this. Ambient radiation readings taken at almost every location were consistently nearly double the normal levels, a startling indicator that ionizing radiation may already be bombarding the people that live along the West Coast of North America. The U.S. government's recent purchase of the potassium iodide, it said, adds to it. Friends, that is your dum of the day, and that is part one of my two-part massive Fukushima update. Uh, tune in tomorrow. It'll be 4 or 4.30. I'll be giving you part two. Also, do you like the dunce cap of the month? Because I don't know if I'm doing this one this month. I'm going to keep the dum of the day, but if you guys really like the Fukushima update, I um, really like the dunce cap of the month, Leave it in the comment line or I'm going to quit doing them because they're kind of expensive. You can donate to the show and help me do more of these more often by going to the correct views on Hotmail.com. Uh, thank you, friends, for listening. It's Sam I.B. Of the correct views, is signing off. Go to the mediaspeaks.com. Look up the work of Kyle Court D. Lake and myself. And protect yourself, people. Protect yourselves. Try to hit about 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day. Echinacea. Cinnamon. Fish oil. I can't overstress selenium and calcium. Look up Guz, uh, Chris Busby Fukushima Calcium. It'll give you everything you need to know on that. Uh, it doesn't make you immune. It doesn't mean you can live in Los Angeles and be safe, but it will help you in the long run. Um, at least push a lot of these uh, elements and threats down a few levels, friends. Thanks for listening. Good night. God bless. 